Friday night I want a chippy tea Chippy tea, chippy tea I want a chippy tea Oh, you keep giving me posh No, she don't agree with me I don't want lobster thermidor With a raspberry coulee It's Friday night and within me right I want a chippy tea What's up, you in a rush? Got some today? <laughs> It's six o'clock over here. Half six over here. There we go. Cheers, big ears. So I love. Don't no, the nice correct point. response is that's the way it goes, big nose. I've never heard that before. It's <laughs> <laughs> to be in our house. <laughs> uh, <laughs> is that the palm, the Palmer family tradition? Oh, absolutely. Cheers, big ears. That's the way it goes, big nose. <laughs> Normally you're all prepared and everything. I know, I can't get settled right now today. I know, what's up with you? I don't know. What's this look like? I just want to feel chilled. Put my feet up here. There you go, you're all right. Lean against the wall, put your feet up, turn your brightness up a little <sighs> bit. <clears throat> There you go. That's you. There, yeah, I'm settled. Back on. You're all right now. I've had a bit of a bit of a a run of success with lining up output devices to presses. Yeah. And uh, what? Well, yeah. I mean, we'll. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll do an intro. We'll keep this bit in. We'll share his beer. What you on? Come on. Brew Dog Planet Pale Ale. Ten Alp. Ella. Ten Alp. Ella. <laughs> That's what I'm on. <laughs> so, Tim. Just ignore me. Just keep going. I will get it right. Just stop playing with it now. It were fine before. It'll drop off. <laughs> You'll not wear it out. <clears throat> right, I'm good. We're good. <clears throat> You're not the way, because you say you're good and then you touch it again. Stop touching it. I'm going to put gloves on. <laughs> right, so, welcome to episode 73 of the Chippy Tea Podcast. What is the Chippy Tea Podcast? It is your chance, your opportunity to eavesdrop, to catch up with uh, a video call that happens regularly between me, Tony Palmer at Palm Print, and... Danny D, Flippy Sleep Print Co. Hey up. As we uh, we catch up um, and try and work out what we've been doing this week or this fortnight or this month or wherever this long past it, couple of week. Got yeah, a couple past, of week. Past, past, past bit of time. Um, a roundabout screen print because we both are screen printers, uh, but there's no guarantee. It could be about anything. It could be about mushrooms, squirrels, or anything in between. So. We'll kick off this week by asking Danny, now he's got his all stuff sorted. Uh, have you got something growing on your top lip or has it always been there? Because I'm zoomed in. It'll blow oh, right, off okay. when you walk on. <laughs> so we'll, we'll throw it over to you. Uh, what's I been doing since last time we spoke? I think last time we spoke, you had a great show and tell with the... Um, the knight or the, the gothic figure yeah. in the background. It's going to be hard to sort of... Top of that, to be honest. I've got a show and tell, though. We won't judge that you. That, too. I mean, well, we that... will judge you, but well, it'll be online. Judging. You won't see it. You'll be lying bastards. Yeah. It'll all be online. You won't see it. So there's this All, the, all website... them groups you're not in. I really... <laughs> well, uh, I'm very antisocial. I really were telling me there's a website. I think we call it Tattle. And this website's purely to talk gossip. shit about certain individuals. It's pure uh, Which, gossip, to me, yeah. just sounds like pure 100% bullying. But, it sounds like screen printers, doesn't it? it yeah, yeah. And uh, I said, I said, search for my name, just in case. Anyway, no, it came up. <laughs> it will be now, but I'll wait there. Oh, there will be now, yeah. Show and tell. Do, 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 do. Ooh. Oh, God, it gets better. Do, 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 do. No, all I can see is your mush. Do, do, do. Let's have a look. I can't tell what you can see on screen. Oh, I can see some detail. Grey, white, 
Poipal gold. No gold this another... time. Is it a yellow? Orange. Yeah, it's just a it's just a combination. So it's it's uh, like a yellow and a bron- bronzy colour. All right. Um, metallic on it. No, we were talking going metallic, and we wanted a metallic purple. And the only real option I can think of for pigmented metallics is the Magna system. Blink. Yeah, Magna Blink. Yeah, because you can dye, you can pigment them to any colour. Works you want really, really long. well. So you buy silver, you start with silver. And mm. to get gold, you just drop a little bit of yellow and magenta in there. Uh, and yellow then, and magenta. Yeah, to get like a gold and, gold and silver. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then uh, you can get a purple, just drop a little bit of blue and magenta in there. Cyan and magenta. Yeah, in the end. Like tiny just... drops. Tiny drops. If you're going to do it, Is it make very, sure you do maybe... very, very small drops. So it's not 6%? No, it's not, no. Oh, wow. No, don't I'll have to try it. it. No. It works it. really well. I, I like it. It was one of my favourites, uh, was Bling. Uh, and I'll have to check whether they still do it or not. I'm sure they do. Um, oh, I think sure, they do. I'm sure it's still an ongoing thing. Yeah, I think they do. I had a go at it at the Magna Academy. Um, I kind of play with it. Hmm. Very impressive. Uh, yeah, it it works really well. A bit expensive at the time, so I didn't, I didn't really get it. Probably still is. Yeah, probably still is. Yeah. You've got but to is, know what you're going to do with it. It's like that stuff that you bought, then FX things that you bought. You know, you'll have them for the next 10 years. Uh, the like HD clear and stuff. Mm. Yeah, yeah, but we're good to have. <laughs> I like play with it. I want to do some more soon. I've got me a uh, fat film out. So we'll do a bit. We'll do a bit soon. But yeah, right. that was just a sort of standard print. Uh, me was your trickery. The actual London base is. What cream. we need to do. Oh. So you've got some fat film. Yeah. We need to clear a day on that press. We do. Uh, after Vespa. What's you got we'll do, some, you? we'll do some lenticular printing. Oh, my God. That would blow got, my I've mind. Got, I've got some art that'll do it. We'll try and get my logo and your logo in some lenticular prints. Oh. Because right, I want to clear with it. Yeah, like... You can't tease me like that. This has to happen. <laughs> this can't be a false promise. <laughs> well, I ain't got anywhere else to go. I ain't got anybody else's press I can hijack for a full day. Uh, yeah, you'll have to let me. You'll have to let me use your press for a day. But we'll uh, we'll have a play. Totally fine. I'll yeah. just sit and watch. Yeah. I'll I'll, That's a, I'll sounds record. Like a plan. Yeah. That sounds like a great plan. Yeah, I'd love to have a go with that. Lenticular. I, I remember we used to do vinyl on the plotter, and we could make. Was it lenticular? It might have been lenticular with vinyl, and it was just like the way that it made the lines, like jagged lines. Mm. And make you see the image. It was very, make portraits out of it. It was a bit weird. Yeah. Um, but Same sort of thing. Well, I've got some artwork, because I found some art that absolutely blew my mind. And I put a, a, a couple of questions online, and somebody came up with the art and gave me it. Oh, they just and give so, you it? But yeah, they sent me it. Uh, so oh, nice. I, I remember printing that back in X amount of years ago. Uh, we did this, we did that. I think I've still got the art somewhere. I'll send you it if you want. They sent me it. I'm like, wow. wow. Which, whether I used the art or not, it meant that I could dissect it forensically yeah, look out how it's done and find out how they did it. I'd, I wouldn't even know where to begin. Mm. I wouldn't even know where to begin. Oh, it'd be, I, I'm not sure. I'm not, I'm not saying I've ever done it before. Something new for me, so we'd have to could see. Could be a disaster. Well, yeah. You know, if it is, we just won't tell anybody. Simple. And if it's <laughs> and if it's great, we'll brag about it forever. <laughs> yeah, Them's <fair>. the rules. <laughs> mm. So, what's, um, how many colours in that one? Full six. Full six colour. Full, full six. Yeah, full six colour. Starting with the underbase. This, this is my team. Ribble chips. <laughs> Aldi special. Um, you get Aldi in. There's an Aldi in Amsterdam, isn't there? Mm. Mm. There's an Aldi opposite hotel. That's where these come from. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically, uh, the this, it's not white, it's cream, is the underbase. Green, okay. Um, and then there's like a grey. Oh, uh, so that'll have been a 60, the cream underbase, or 62. Mm. Uh, then everything else will be 90s on top. So cream, grey, like a yellow. It was really weird, actually. It was like a lime yellow. And I thought, mm. I looked at it and I thought, that's not going to look right. 
and anyway, anyway, you put another colour on top, which was like a almost a copper colour, and it actually did. It worked. It, worked it does well. work. Yeah, yeah, it works and well. And the purple is a last. Is he a black on this one? No, and there's a black like on it. this one. Where is a black? I right. had a black just to key it all together. Um, I'm actually tempted to try some one twenties. I don't know with, if he could play a well. water burst. Plastisol. Yeah, you're all right with plastisol. Yeah. Water burst. You put you're pushing it a bit with water burst. Drying up a bit. Just a little bit. Yeah. You don't get that impact that you want. Yeah. I mean, I've just curious. been using one twenties today. Uh, I've been using yeah. I've been using a, a two bases and a far colour on a on a um, on an under base with the far colours being one twenties. Mm-hmm. All tones blending into each other. And there's no like it, it just clears fine. I can't yeah. see why it won't. Yeah. I'm sure when you're using a hard the only, blade, the only issue clears. we had with this one. <clears throat> so I'm over at um, fabric in Belgium. Fabric. 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 Um and the only issue was this this let's say it's text with a rainbow blend effect. Right. So I think it's five colours blending into each other like a rainbow blend. And um a base white. Uh to get it good we've done two base whites. So base flash, base flash. Yeah. Make it look really nice and gorgeous. And then we drop the colours on top. So we drop the colours using a 120. Perfect. Great. Everything worked lovely. No rip off. Pick the right angles, pick the right blades, pick the right pressures and travels. Straight in. Absolute dream of a job, which looked like a nightmare to start with. Um, yeah, yeah. I can always tell because the operators are relaxed. If the operators are stressed, I haven't done a good job. We've, yeah. not, we've not tried to second guess all the issues. So the operators were nice and relaxed. Uh, we ran the job, but at the end of the job, there was 20 white sweatshirts with the same image, same print. Oh, I've had an harsh lesson this week, and it's this, what you're about to tell me. So we've made the screens according to the black sweatshirts. We haven't mm. made the screens according to the white sweatshirts. And I've spent a lot of time this week trying to break the double print habit. You know right, my yeah. views on double stroking two and two. I, I'm not saying it's cheating, but it is. <laughs> yeah. But that doesn't mean I, I haven't cheated. I'm not holier than thou. No. Um, but you have to understand why you're doing it. So if you're doing it because one of the decisions out of the six, the mesh, the blade, the speed, the pressure, the angle, and the travel, if one of those is wrong... <clears throat> then I can counteract it with a double stroke. Mm. The problem here is over 10 years, double stroke has become default. Yeah, yeah. The starting point. We never print one-on-one. Why? We just always print two-on-two. Two. Why? Because that's the way we've always done it. Because oh, it, no. it clears the screen better. But it... Yeah. So breaking that habit's been difficult. And I've not got on my arse, but I've, you know, said, look, just please take it off double stroke. It doesn't need it. We'll get the pressures, the travel, and the angle right. And then we don't need it. Okay. Yeah. And then we get from black shirt, black sweatshirt to white sweatshirt. And they've come to me and said, Tony, this blue looks crap. So, yeah, because it does. Yeah. Hit it. But you said not to double hit. No, I didn't say not to double hit. <laughs> I said, don't double hit by default. Mm-hmm. Break it down. Why does the blue look crap? I don't know, because it looked great on the white base. Now it's not on a white base. It, it looks crap. It looks crap because it's on a 120 on a sweatshirt. We haven't got enough penetration of the ink in the shirt. Yeah. Whereas before, we were sitting on a piece of shiny plastic that we'd flash yeah. dried. Yeah. Now, we're printing onto fluffy cotton that's got big holes in it. And it looks shit. You're right. But what can we do? Well, Fuck all. what we really should do is remake all the meshes down to either 77s or 90s. Yeah. Uh, but we're not going to do that for 20 shirts. We're just going to press double hit. You said yeah, that's double yeah. hit. I know I did, but it's because something's wrong. I don't mind double hitting if you know and you understand what's wrong. So come and tell yeah. me what's wrong, and then we'll look at the time value on solving it. So what's wrong? All right, well, we made all the meshes according to a white base, and now we've got shirts without a white base. Well, one easy solution is continue printing the white base. 
on white shirts. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, I don't mind that. that. I don't mind that. Yeah, that that yeah. works. Well, yeah, you're creating your nice, you're, you're smoothing your shelf to put your income top of, and in theory, it should be, it should solve it. So you don't change anything, yeah. Um, Never big thought shops. Of that. Big shops would argue that it's wasting a colour, wasting an ink, but. If that's where you're losing your money, you're in the wrong game. Go out and go make pizzas or something for a minute. I mean, for the sake of twenty t shirts. I mean if yeah. you're in if if you're in this position where you're running a couple hundred shirts and at the end of it someone said, Oh, can you chuck twenty sweatshirts on? Yeah. You're just gonna just, just let it run with that white base. Like it's really not end of the world. Yeah. Or you double hit your top colours to make them penetrate the ink better. Mm. And that's what we ended up doing. We ended up doing that, but not, it wasn't a willy nilly or a first response knee jerk sort of right double hit. No, let's explore the options first. <clears throat> We'd got the angles quite um, progressively from hard to soft. Mm. You know, in the color order, we start hard, finish soft, just like in life. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. yeah. Now, <laughs> I now, heard remember. That one. now it's time to take a shot, everybody. <laughs> <it? laughs> so, as we use those progressive angles, then. Um, it, we protect all the other colours, protect thy neighbour, we protect the other colours, everything's working fine. Then when we go to white t-shirt, white sweatshirts, all of a sudden this angle's not enough to give me the, the, the push down that I want to fill the holes. So yeah. I say, what can we do? Just fucking change it. Simple. But you said we've got to do, yeah, when we're on a white base, those are the rules. Now we're not on a yeah. white base, just make it look pretty. What do you mean? Just make it look pretty. Do whatever you need to do to make it look pretty. No, We're not protecting anything. We're rule. not protecting anything. No. But except for and tell people, and sometimes yeah. it's just getting it done, isn't it? Getting yeah, it you done, can whatever it takes. There's anything on this press you can change. There's nothing on this press you're not allowed to touch. Well, just think less of your for doing it as a as a standard. They made me a little badge look. Like a self-portrait. It looks like me. <laughs> now, and considering where you are, but have you? Don't lick it. I don't know what's on it. You never know what might might send you. Might send you to space. That's you next week. <laughs> I don't know. You need your, mushroom, compelling... your mushrooms and your gummies. What, what is it? I've got this compelling, like, need to read some Terence McKenna or something. <laughs> he, he, were, he went to he went to psychedelics and stuff. Oh, right. okay. Somebody, somebody will understand that. Yeah, I'm older than it you. Went off I understand. Yeah. Um, I'm looking forward to Vesper. First time on a plane. Early is fuming. <laughs> there's not, there's not enough money in the world. Not for a gold pig would I get on a plane with you for the first time, and you wouldn't want me there because I would just rib you to death by like, oh, is that supposed to happen? That's never <sighs> happened before. Oh, what's that noise? <laughs> oh, I'm not bothered about that stuff. Won't phase me in the slightest. Getting on a plane, the actual plane journey, apart from being able to not being able to freely pee at <laughs> regular intervals, but um, the actual flight would just be boring as hell. Um, it won't phase me. It's most. It's more of the stress of the uh, actual airport that'll get to me. It's a bit people. much. Too many people. Too many people, people. A bit too stressy. Yeah. Too much. Like oh, we've got to be here and here and here, and oh, we've got to check your passport. Is it signed? No, well, you can't go, whatever. About they have to sign your passport, which I only found out. Mine's full. So they've a stamp it or something? So, yeah, you get a stamp every time you travel into Europe now. Now, you didn't used to. You used to be able to go freely through Europe, but we decided to leave Europe for some reason, and without getting too political. That was a mistake. <laughs> and, and, and I didn't think it was at the time, but now trying to travel through Europe, it's such a nightmare. You might as well try to be travel to Azerbaijan. It, it's just yeah. You know, I only want to go to Amsterdam. It's only hundred mile away from coast of England. For Christ's sake, I think I, I think I, if I Google sort of uh, Norwich coast, it's about hundred mile away. I mean, it, not the travel, just import and export is like so it's much more hard work yeah. now than it ever was. And what we should so have done? Costly. We shouldn't. We shouldn't have left. We should have just asked for and insisted on better representation. Because we felt we were getting a shitty end at stick. And I come over here, and it's it's nice. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Europe's nice. Everybody's, oh, a lovely place. everybody's organised yeah. and well-behaved. And and you go to England, you're like, whoa, this is a bit rough. Oh, What's yeah, going on like, here? 
we, we, we like to have Wiki, don't we? Especially all. Especially all. <laughs> Can't wait to wear uh, I won't be going here very often soon. <laughs> Did I tell you about an house? Don't know yeah, you didn't know. When oh, you when it's all that sorted. Well, we're expecting a date any day now. Um, it, could, it could be any time really, but we sort of say in April, May. April, May. May a push, maybe. Right. What date are we have now? We'd March. like the 28th of March, but whether that happens or not, seems a bit short notice. Mm. But I bought an house, I know. Check you out. Sold your soul again. You don't have any of it left. I'm not making my life very easy, am I? All these commitments to <laughs> I know, <yeah>. money. <laughs> I, I, can't help what, think, I can't help but think it's since you met me. I'm sure when we first started, <laughs> you were young, free and single and living with your mum. Now look at you. You're practically married and you've got an house and a, and a, and a, and a press to pay for. <laughs> I'm just, just following in my role models' footsteps. <laughs> oh, I love that, wouldn't it? <laughs> Well, that out of me. Um, <laughs> what were we talking about? We we're talking about Brexit, weren't we? What were we talking about before Brexit? Nah, that's flying, it, flying. So it, yeah, yeah, we'll move past all that. So, um, how do you feel about when a customer says to you, I want 200 t-shirts, and can you just chuck 10, 10 sweatshirts at end of the run? Or more realistically, in my case, very often it's, oh, can I have 50 t-shirts and Free sweatshirts for myself. Now, in the olden days, on the press, back in the youth, um, on the manual, it wouldn't really be an issue because it would quite easily printed. You can print both substrates just by alternating a bit of pressure with your hands, and very little press changes were needed. Um, and worst case scenario, you just hit it twice, you know, and made up for it. But now on the auto, I've run into a number of occasions where. I've run a job and chucked the garments on at the end and the settings are not where they need to be. And it just ruins garments and then you end up kicking yourself thinking, Why did I just why didn't I just say no to this? So I have come to a bit of a I think the minimum orders applies to the same garment. There's no here's a runner t shirts and chuck a couple of sweatshirts at the end of it anymore. Because every every substrate needs a almost a completely new set of settings on press to print optimal you don't I probably i probably disagree with you there um it all depends on what uh what type of press have you've got what have you got Danny? i run mhm x type plus from mhm direct gb uk limited plc company might even be a charity i don't know absolute seamless um very charitable people <laughs> So you'd recommend going there if if we wanted to buy a press then? If you want an MHMX Type Plus 86, I can tell you now there's no better place to go than right, MHM so Direct. Now we've got that shit out of the way. Um, I don't think it's a case of just adjusting off contact. Off contact and, and sometimes a double stroke. I would say 90% of the time that solves the problem in the short term less than 10 pieces. If you've got more than 10 pieces, you need to start looking at increasing travel and pressure. Um, but the majority of the time, because the adjustments on that press, especially the off-contact, are so easy and they don't change the registration, it yeah, does no, make it a true. lot easier. You have to understand the little nuances between a 5 and an 8 off-contact, a 10 and a 15 angle, you know, and, and sacrifice a little bit of opacity to keep it clean. Uh, and, and, you know, you have to make those decisions on the fly like you do anyway when you're printing. Yeah, I think I'm being a little bit too subtle with me off-contact changes. I run a job of a day and it wore uh, sweatshirts. And instead of printing at three and four or whatever, I knocked it up one. I mean, actually, I ended up knocking it up like four, four or five mil or something in the end yeah. to get a good print so that that ink, the initial ink, released rather than... Sticking. <laughs> Sticking. Um, but it took. I, I was surprised at how many turns it took before it stopped doing that. Two to three. Uh, so yeah. Two to three. I think e easily two to three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm learning. It's still learning. This is yeah, the we, thing. We've yeah. done it today. We've gone from tees to sweats. We had tees, sweats, and polos. The tees and and the and the sweats were relatively easy, but then I had to change the blades for a little cutout blade for the for the polos. And then yeah. there were some half zip neck sweats as well. And the, today's half-zip-neck sweats 
have got this placket that extends underneath. Oh, I know what you mean. Oh, yeah, so where does it end? It's almost like yeah. a like an inch square piece Under, of... underneath. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've right seen behind that. the zip. Well, yeah. it's great you don't see it, but when you put it on a plant on a pallet, all of a sudden it's underneath your bleeding print. So well, it's all right. I'll fold it up. So you fold it up, and now the bleeding T-shirt's four inches thick, and you're like, "What's going on here?" Uh, so can you... that that tested today. Can you remember? I can't remember which brand it was, but one of the brands introduced metal eyelets on the inside and pockets or something like that. I think it was Gildan hoodies, I think. Once. It could have been. Yeah. And the people were fuming because it were popping screens, <laughs> wasn't it? They yeah. get warm. You have to load them off. You can't load them on the pallet. You have to load them off the pallet. And then when you load yeah. them off the pallet, you end up with this little V-mark where you squashed all the fibres. I've, so, still not, I've still not solved that problem, you know. Like, it's still less so... I feel like the more the the closer I the more experienced I'm getting a dialing in the press, I'm getting less pressure mark mm. to a point where it's probably acceptable now. But it's, it's still there. Yeah. And uh something to keep working at, I think. Spray bottle with water in. That's the only thing I've not tried. And a little tiny bit of fabric conditioner. Mm. That's the only thing I've not tried yet. So the fabric conditioner, so Technically, fabric conditioner relaxes the fibres of a garment. That's what it does when it's in the wash. So obviously the, sh- the, 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 the soap bit gets the stains out. But the fabric conditioner relaxes all the fibres and, and lets them loose. So It's like poppers for sweatshirts. <laughs> yeah. So if, if, we put, if we put a little drop of fabric conditioner into a spray bottle. Fabric poppers. And, and spray it on, then it... As it steams out, it relaxes it a little bit. Yeah, I'll have to try that. But do you, I think some, some garments are more problematic than others. So I suppose it's just a case of having that bottle on hand. And if you happen to be printing a problematic garment, just give it a quick spray. Yeah, basically. Uh, I guess it's just part and parcel of printing on an auto, on a manual. You're, you're using heat and pressure. And this is a, an iron mark, which is caused by heat and pressure. So because yeah. we, we have to use both, we can't just use one, we, we use heat and pressure. It it, um, it causes this, this pressure mark, which is oh. released during the first launder, first wash. But oh, yeah, it, yeah. It's, it's no good if you, your customer's going to an event and he's opening his shirts and he's got this V there. Yeah, I wonder if it's less prominent on rubber pallets. Even um, I'm, I'm starting know. to think now. Maybe. Because there was never an issue on manual, which was a rubber no. pallet. But you didn't have any, anywhere near the amount of pressure that you're putting on now. No, no. And you, nowhere you know, near the amount of six bar of pressure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have you ever run into um, a situation where you have maxed out your off, maxed out your travel and it's still not clear the screen? Yes. Why does it do that? What is, I've had that's how it's a real big long open ended question, wasn't it? I, I had a one of Ed's for some reason seems to be max out max out travel. Um and at fifteen degrees it don't seem to want to clear. So I've ended up putting more angle on to get it to clear. Um I thought, well, because it's almost on like a pivot, the squeegee and the flood bar, I thought maybe the flood bar needs knocking back down a bit. Do you know? That can do it. On setup, we've got to make sure that all the heads are at the same height. If one of the heads is a mill out, then that mill big... reduces from your travel. Yeah, yeah. So I was recently in America and I had this problem. It was a huge problem. The guy had just bought the press. Um, they bought two presses. South Shore Customs. I don't know if they're listening, but hi. I remember um, South Shore. Mm, remember seeing them on there. Long Island, New York. Um, on the South Shore. They bought two new presses, and it came with, obviously, two sets of squeegees and pallets. Well, they said, well, <clears throat> we want another set of squeegees to make sure that we're not cleaning squeegees all the time. So yeah, they had another set of squeegees it, yeah, from yeah. Action Engineering. Now, when the Action Engineering squeegees came, they were slightly different. 
So they don't like different. They want everything the same. Mm. So they added another set of squeegees from Action Engineering so that they had two sets on each press. Yeah. The, the MHM ones went into storage, the ones that came with the press. And then they... Is that Ailish? Sure, right, sure. <laughs> Just died of air. I don't want to mute it, so... Because we're quite... We're a bit more professional than that, aren't we? Uh, well, we didn't used to be. But <sighs> we changed. So then they decided they wanted sets of pallets, uh, kids and sleeves and adults. So they got those from Action Engineering. Well, as it turns out, the squeegees were a mill shorter when made by Action Engineering. And the pallets were two mil lower. Oh, right. So the combination of the two meant I lost some travel. And yeah. I could get it to print, but only just. Just, yeah. Well, and I'm on, I'm on I'm maxing saying. out on everything, and I could double hit and it would work. But it's not normal, because normally I can, I can normally I have to go to maximum on the travel and back off three. And that's back my starting off, yeah. point. Right. Um, and it'll still print on the squeegee. Six. Yeah, on the squeegee. And um, 13, 13 on the flood bar and three on the squeegee. Mm. Mm. From I'm going to have to try that. I remember From when I first got it, that was, that was your little tip to get me going. Mm. And then I sort of just sort of did it, got it got it where I wanted yeah, it. You're all right now. You're, you're all right now. Um, yeah. So only from measuring everything really, really accurately do we find out the combination of uh, a third-party squeegee and a third-party um, palette didn't quite difference. reach. Uh, and, I mean, luckily, I had, a, I had a technician with me, so we just we adjusted all the heads to fit the lower... So it can be done. ...lower uh, variable. Uh, right. Which meant that when we go back to the OEM, I think it's called, you know, original manufacturer stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I had too much trouble. But I'm all right with right, that. Yeah. I don't mind backing off. Yeah, because you can so back my norm- off yeah. that and work backwards. So my normal back off of three has now become six. Yeah, right. Because at three, it's too heavy. I've actually got about the same amount of power as an M&R, which, you know, it's got like the strongest pistons in the in the industry. <laughs> can bend the squeegee in half. Um, <laughs> where the m and used to be about, the MHM used to be about control. Yeah. So it's a matter of how it's set, and it's it, you know it's damn close. It's to within a millimeter or not, and it could be that one head's half a mil out or one mil out. Um, yeah, possibly. It just needs to probably, be one. You, know, you, you get rich back in. Well, yeah, I do at some point. I'm pretty sure I can get him to adjust it, but I make I'm making do. But like Sam, changing my angle one more than I ideally want. I give you a way to test. Because there is also something else. You know, the two black um, look like snooker cue tips. Pop, pop them in and out, make sure it clicks. Yeah, so where they where the head comes down and sits on those two black circles. You know where your black clip comes down ah, and holds yeah, your squeegee yeah. down? The it, little it, felt it, stop it. sits on, yeah. So they're either yeah. screwing or self-adhesive. Make yeah, sure they, I think. Make sure they are not stuck up proud because they will stop the squeegee coming down as far as it should. I <laughs> wonder. Hmm, I'll have a look at that. I'll have a look at that. See, it's funny because so, I've had that problem, but then I've also had the mechanism releasing. <laughs> mm. Halfway through a print, I've had that so, problem so as it well. Might, it might not be quite clicking in then, so it might be a little high, in which case mm. we can lower the whole assembly. I wonder, I wonder. I'll have to have a the little play and have a look. The best way to tell is get your metal ruler, stand the ruler without a screen in there on the pallet and mark where the extrusion of the um, the print head is. And then check out the rest. And then check it against the next one. Yeah, good idea. Good idea. Just to check I've got they're that. all the same. They should be all the same. But, you know, I tell people this all the time. It, it's capital equipment. It's mechanical equipment. There are you can't make every single press exactly the same forever and no, ever and ever no. and ever. There has to be manufacturing tolerances in the same way yeah. that your first print that you did is not the same as the thousandth print that you did. But it's within an acceptable tolerance, a commercially yeah. acceptable tolerance. But it's it's within that range, so we're okay. It's the same with manufacturing. You know, we we have certain tolerances we have to hit. 
and I think in the in the MHM world, it's zero point zero two mil is a tolerance. So you know, wow. it, it's damn close. Be but, hard to see by eye. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Have you got? Is it even a thing? So you know when you're setting your, you're setting your travel, you're setting your pressure, you're setting your speed, etc. I wonder if there's a way that you can test, almost like a almost like a, a print, a screen where you've got lots of fine detail and then open space. It's almost like you know when you do like an exposure calculator type of thing. Mm. Is there a way we can have a travel thingy thingy thingy, travel speed angle calculator where it's a screen? You pull, you look at it, and you go. Ah, some of these lines are missing. It's not quite clear in here and here and here. So we need a little bit more speed. Do you know? Or is that just asking I, I, a little bit too much? It, it, it's because there's so many other variables. We've got our six variables. Our six variables are mesh, blade, angle, travel, speed, pressure. Once we've got those nailed, we're all right. But then there are a myriad of other variables that we are pre- pre- garments, we're presuming are stable. We've got the number one garments. Even from garment to garment, mm. the composition changes. Yeah. They're not all the same. So it's very difficult to say, right, okay, if it's a guild and soft style, then you almost always use pressure number three. Because that variable of, well, it's a guild and soft style, but it came from Haiti. Well, this is a guild and soft style, but this one came from, from Guatemala. Honduras. Yeah, or Honduras, or Bangladesh. And the, the, the makeup of the face of the shirt is ever so slightly different. Not enough mm. for you to complain and get your money back, not enough for the customer to notice, but enough for you to not be able to use a constant set of variables or parameters to print with, unfortunately. And we have to rely on your intelligence. It's your interpretation of what's happening using those skills that you've learned across those six variables, which then give you the skill of adapting as the conditions change. We start off in the morning with thick white ink, and then in the afternoon it's all broken down and loose, like a a bad stool after a curry. (laughs) It's it's much more print. It's much more printable. We've got a screen tension ranging from 26 to 18. You know, it printed and cleared on the 26, but it didn't on the 18. We've got a a different uh, mesh angle. We've got different off contacts. We've got different times of the day when the compressor's working. All these myriad of different stuff. And then you've got emulsion thickness. You know, I I coated Mm. these screens on Monday when I was full of the joys of life and springing like a newborn lamb. By Friday, I'm swinging from the rafters, wishing I'd done better at school, thinking I can just cut these in two seconds. And that affects how much ink we put down. I, I tested the screen today. I told, you, we know we've been through the fact that I've got an emulsion thickness tester, but I don't use it. I use yeah. my fingernail. I use my fingernail. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and only if it fails the fingernail test do I then sort of like get the emulsion test, uh, emulsion thickness tester out. And I pulled up my screen, and I'm like... Do you do a two and one? Yeah. Do you dry your screens shirt side down? Yeah. Wrong way around. Oh. Well, this is this thickness is crap. If I had to measure it, it'd be really, really low. Oh no, we we do everything correctly. We do two and one. We've got good emulsion. We've got uh, everything set right. We've got the humidity right. And I went and checked. Does the diazo in water? It's not and one. Maybe using a bit too much. It's not one. It's a it's a one pot. So I'm like, well. That's odd, because it should, everything you're doing, everything right, but I feel in the emulsion, and it's crap. And I got my little magnifying glass out, and it looked crap. And then I said, you know, so let's go have a look. Let's go into the screen room. Come on, into the screen room. So we go into the screen room, pick a screen up by random. It's here, and I'm going like, what we need to do is we get our fingernail, and we go across it. Oh, it's there. Oh. Oh, forget that. No. It's just the one screen that I'm actually testing. Just your pot look. Just pure pop Typical. for some reason. Somebody yeah. blasted it to fucking death and taken yeah. a, a, about three, 30 microns of emulsion off it <laughs> by blasting it to death. Probably in the thinking that, oh, it's for Tony, he's, in, he's waiting for it, he's in a rush, let's blast it out yeah. real quick. Yeah. Yeah. And, and what that meant was that emulsion was thinner, which meant mm. I was never going to get as the same thickness of white because the emulsion was thinner. 
So the well of ink that I'm leaving behind was thinner on this screen than the other one. Now, without the right equipment or without knowing what to look for, you think it was you. Oh, yeah. yeah. You'd you think it was, it was you. Well, I've got the same squeegees in. I've got the same ink in. I've got the same settings. I've just run a job. It was beautiful. All I've done is swap a screen for the same mesh count. Everything's the same. And now it's shit. Why? And it could be one of those hidden variables that you just never even considered. You just have to be so OCD about everything to eliminate variants as much as you possibly can. And I guess that's where automation comes into it because you're taking variants out of it, as yeah. many variables as you possibly can that can be affected by a human being. I, I'm, I'm a bit the other way around than OCD. I'm, I'm a bit, you are free to change anything on this press. And I've had to go around. So they've asked me, what should I set my off contact on? Well, it depends on the day. Yeah. What I meant it, is it, more it practices. How yeah, it depends how, it, how it's printing. It depends what shirt you're going on to. It depends what the ink is like. It depends what blade you've got in, at what angle, at what pressure. So, you know, <laughs> you have to trust your intelligence to understand the six variables and then use your intelligence to change them. Not change them willy-nilly. Not take a pot look and think, well, I'll just change this bit here and see what happens. Yeah, but actually I, use I think, your intelligence. I think it's intelligence, but I think it's also a developed intuition. I think mm. the longer you spend on the press, the more uh, experience and projects you run, the, you know, the, the more orders, the more amount of shirts and garments, et cetera, et cetera. You mm. pick, up, pick up the knowledge, you pick up the skill and the experience, and then you have an intuition before you put the next job on where mm. you you know that actually I need to back the off contact off on this particular garment, or et cetera, et cetera. Or if I run it a lot, if I run the squeegee out a little bit faster, it'll butter it over rather than driving it in because this particular garment's got quite a, uh, a quite a, thick, quite way, a textured yeah. knit. Yeah. yeah. All these little things that just come with uh, time printing, I guess. Um, yeah, I obviously it's good today. to have. Mm. You did a bit of that today. I, well, I had a bit of it. It was, it was actually a really nice moment. Sometimes I do get rewarded from this job. Um, we were doing a very, very simple white text left chest on sweatshirts. We've got two screens. We're running a, a light grey and a white. So we're... we ah, yeah. light. I see. <laughs> uh, and the, the confidence to back off pressure You've got to be brave. Yeah. It's so easy to have everything on maximum and guarantee it prints. It's the um, the underexposure thing. If you're making a screen, yeah, play it I safe can guarantee you 95% of printers will underexpose to play it safe and not make a game. To gamble. get that little bit extra detail out. Yeah. It, well, plus, if I overexpose, the screen's fucked. If I underexpose, the screen's soft. I'll cope with the soft screen. But if I can't yeah, get the yeah. image out at all, it's it's screwed. I have to start again. I don't want to waste it. So I'll go. I'll play it safe. I'll go on the underside. When we're using pressure and travel on a on a on a press, we play it safe. We we have extra pressure, extra travel, just to make sure, just in case any of those pallets are off center. Well, they're not because it's it's an MHM. If it's an M and R and Anatol or, or and, and Delco, there's a chance because they're lined up by four screws. There it could be right? a little bit. And so we'll put extra pressure on to, to compensate for pallet number nine, which is always a little bit low. But when they've been laser leveled, we don't need to do that. Am I right in thinking also other man, other presses, um, the squeegee is like two pistons, whereas mm. the MHM is a centre point. So that pivot, it's got its nat it naturally tilts as it needs to with the gamma. Self leveling, same as the rock. Self leveling, the exactly the same. Word. Right. Pivots, pivots in the centre, and it's got a good two or three mil either way in which to self-level. The, yeah, yeah. uh, the M&R, the Anatol, the Sabre have two. You were just under. They yeah. call them shock absorbers. Yeah. So these compensate for any irregularities, irregularities oh, right. within the power. Almost like a suspension type of thing. Yeah, so like a shock absorber. So... They come down, but if one of them is a bit low, it, it compensates for it. And, and it see. goes like that. Whereas if we just right. pivot it in the middle, it naturally compensates without just having to have an extra cylinder. 
Yeah, I think going back to printing white, going back to printing just a simple white text, those are the jobs I sort of criticise the most because it's those simple whites where you look at them and you go, is it sharp? Is it a razor sharp line, et cetera, et cetera. And that's, those are the ones I spend the most time fine-tuning and being self-critical about because, you know, when you can get an absolutely crisp, opaque, perfect white, you know you've got your settings right. That's what we did today. It's almost the hardest thing to do yeah. as, as so, a statement. So we did that today. This is a shop that double hits everything by default. Uh, uses maximum travel and pressure by default. And yeah. thinking that's the brightest way to do things. So when I go in there, you know, Billy Big Bollocks saying, take your pressure off. They're like, no, we want it brighter. We'll take your travel off then. We want it brighter. We don't want it less. <laughs> like, okay, trust me. So we set up this job, little, uh, little it's like Times New Roman serif text. And <clears throat> a little bit of a block as well. So it looked nice. Took a print. I said, right, I'm going to load for you. Really? Yeah, I'm going to load. You're going to stand there in front of that base white and you're going to take off travel. Every print, off. watch out what happens. Yeah. Yeah. Watch what happens. Take the travel off. One. Is it still printing? Yeah. Two. Still printing? Yeah. Three. Still printing? Yeah. Take another off. Four. <gasps> Fuck, it didn't print. Okay, put it back. Back one. Yeah, back one. We now know that we're on minimum. If I take one yeah. more off, it fails. So I found my failure yeah. point, my minimum point. Now do the same with the pressure. What do you mean? Well, we're on six bar. Put it on five and a half. Okay, do a print, five and a half. Still prints. Take it to five. Still prints. Take it to four and a half. Mm, don't like it. Put it back to five. So now we had one bar too many of pressure. We had three turns too many of travel. Print now looks fucking superb crisp and clean we've got a roller on there to make it smooth and as it comes round now we can see that we were actually a little bit out of reg before we didn't notice it because we were spreading yeah because it was compensating with so spread, now we yeah. can tweak the reg a little bit so we tweaked the little reg a little bit about five minutes on a clock face just turning this dial now all of a sudden the customer sees a white print on a navy shirt, and he doesn't give a monkey's flying ass. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> but the guys on the other press came across and went, how did you do that? So it's a bit nerdy in that only another printer would see that that's a really nice crisp print. But it's worth finding that point, that failure point, just to yeah, just to excel in your own class or have a little bit of pride in what you what you print yourself. Yeah, it's pride in it. And it's, it, it's... Is, it is a little bit, yeah. Depends I was told. I once told a printer. He said, "You've been there with me about six months." He says, well, "I don't know what else you want from me. How do I get more money?" What do you mean? What do I need to do? It's all right. I'm going to write How do I make more money? I'm, I'm going to. I'm going to write it in this envelope. I'm going to seal the envelope, and I'll give it to you on Friday. And he's working, and he's cleaning while he's working. He's fucking sweeping up. He's whistling. He's going as fast as he can. He says, "Well, that is that what's written in the envelope?" I went, "Nope." So he works all the time and he, he's staying over, he's getting in early, he's been really conscientious. Is, is that what's in the, in the envelope? No. On Friday he went, for fuck's sake, what's in the envelope? He opened it up and I just wrote the word pride. That's all. Right. I just want you to be proud of what you produce. Have some pride in what you produce. I want you to yeah. go home and brag to your mum. Look what I did today, mum. Look, look, it says in D, yeah. in white, look. You know, yeah. I'm like, go get a proper job. <laughs> do you know I think it's it's just sort of like um, feeling that you can show other printers if that, maybe that's the way of doing it like I'll quite often not put stuff on Instagram because I'm being self-critical and I'm looking at the edges of the night they're not quite as crisp as I want it to be <laughs> then it, commercially acceptable customer don't have a single clue they don't care I think it looks totally fine almost being able to, I mean, some people do post some crap, but I, I find it my the bigger thing is to not mention it. I post it tortures me. I posted some other day, and I knew someone was going to say something, and yes, yeah, truly they did. Oh, it's a little bit out of that. Don't be that guy. It's a test shirt for fuck's sake. <laughs> I, I struggle with it a little bit. I have to, I have to try and remind myself sometimes. I'm not selling to other printers. 
It's for, for people who it's want to buy the shirts. That's a great <laughs> way to. That's a great way to put it. You are not I, selling I, very to often. Printers. Very often, I won't put stuff on Instagram. More often than not, I won't show off the work that I've printed. For fear because of I'll be like, another print. Another printer's going to see that. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> or maybe I should have used this. I am mesh count on this particular job. Mm. Like we're talking the tiniest fraction of detail that only me and you and other printers would see. But a customer don't know that. No. But there are people out there waiting to trip you up and want to say, Oh, that is that out of red? I do trade shows all the time. You know I do trade shows. But the people that come to trade shows are printers. So I've got yeah like a thousand American printers coming up to me and going, Is that out of reg? How about this? <laughs> <Fuck off. laughs> <laughs> you know what? You know when I turn up to Fesper and I sneak up behind you. That's what I'm going to do. Is that, that out of reg? Reg? <laughs> <laughs> Hey God, it's a um, 53 minute mark, and I'm going to go for a wee and blow my nose because I'm so stuffy today. I've got really stuffy nose. I've got like proper brain fog. I just frog? I feel like I've got a bit of a cold coming on. I've got brain frog. That's really? how bad it is. <laughs> Muff are we? <laughs> <laughs> I think Vesper has come at a really good time. I had a re- I've had a pretty horrendous, maybe a good week or two. This week's actually been pretty good. But the week before, well, absolutely horrific. <laughs> I had a couple of uh, situations with a couple of orders. Probably that just... nightmare, jo- nightmare jobs. Yeah, polyester was the big one. And then mm. on the back of that, when you've got one problem that you're spending more days than you should be on, then other problems mount on top of it because then other people are saying, where's my stuff, where's my stuff? Mm. And I just think I'm a bit off at the back of that. A bit burnt out at the minute. Uh, so, having weekend off, Saturday, Sunday, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday in Amsterdam. I think that's been pretty well-timed, really. When you get when you get into Amsterdam? Going Sunday, uh, Sunday. We're going to Manchester Sunday, so we'll fly first thing Monday morning. All right, we're staying over Monday we just night. Stop, Sunday yeah, night in Manchester. So I would have to get up at crack of dawn. Yeah, <laughs> basically. Um, so I was stopping in Manchester, off for a Sunday dinner, and then Monday morning we'll just uh, drive over to the airport. It's probably like twenty minutes away or something. Get on a plane. I think we get in Amsterdam about eleven o'clock ish, something like that. Monday. Go find some fancy chips or whatever Amsterdam people eat these days. And then Tuesday, come and see you. Awesome. I only got my first day crap out guy. You... guy Ace Colour. Yeah. Yeah, Guy Ace Colour is going to be about. I'm going to try bump into Guy. Mm. And then just see what crack is with all this trade show. Malarkey. Yeah. Well, nice we'll to sort a... of walk about. We'll definitely have a, we'll have a beer. We might even yeah, have one of these, nice. look. We've got one of these. An oval. Oval and oh. Dean. <laughs> oval the duck. I wish I could oval fly. Oval duck, I remember that now. <laughs> <laughs> oval duck. So this is a, a Trappist beer. So I'm, I presume it's made by monks in an abbey. Oh, really? Now that's mm. cool, isn't it? I like that. Yeah. So it was, well, it's, a lot, it's a lot of bollocks. It's just a marketing play. Oh, yeah, it's absolutely. It's made by Tetley's Brewery. It's made in Tadcaster. In Roundhead, yeah. <laughs> It's in Roundy Park. (laughs) (laughs) But we'll say cheers to you. We'll say cheers to you on on Tuesday. Uh, Yep. I've seen a lot of preparation going on. I've seen a lot of preparation going on. Um, Yeah, I think it's such a big place. It must be such a big, such a big place and such a big event. What day are we on? Wednesday? Is it Wednesday? Wednesday. I know MHM has started building their oval today. So they're already setting up, and it doesn't start till Monday, does it? It'll take take four to five days to build an oval. Wow, yeah. There's there's a a 5,000 to build and and an S-type, I think, as well, a little compact to to build, plus all the ancillary stuff, uh, lasers and shit like that. Got all your artwork sorted? You ready to go? Screens, (laughs) etc. That face is probably not. (laughs) I have a debate with artwork every time for trade shows. Is it a so, battle? Because they want something super nice and you're like, just show Everybody off. wants a superb piece of artwork. Well, number one, you've got to pay for that. You know, creative people don't create 
fantastic pieces of artwork for free. So you're like, okay, yeah, well, I it for you instead. No, it is. Wow. Now this is worth exploring. I've got one coming up in Guatemala, and I might, I might have a little bit of a play in AI. Yeah. I found um, what is it Photoshop or Illustrator. That's got a built-in AI image generator. You don't have yeah, to yeah, it's been new version. Has. I don't know if it's a beta or if it's like the full version. Or what. Yeah, I used it a couple of times on some stuff. It's really and I'm impressive. Like, I quite like yeah. that. So, but yeah. you see, I've got the creative skills of a dead dog, so it, you have to know what to ask it. I think it's Marshall Atkinson who does the mid journey stuff. He does a lot of that, and he's yeah. got well into it. Him and Michelle Moxley have got well into it. Fahrenheit AI, mm. and. They produce some fantastic stuff, but they know what to ask for. So it's I would, a skill. well, me me, you would ask for a, you know, a squirrel eating its nuts on a tree. <laughs> They'll say squirrel eating a particular kind of nut, shaded yeah. in, in, in Pantone browns, lit from the side, using a cinematic technique of half turning blending, you know, mm. and the description gets bigger and bigger and it's very technical the way that they they describe how they want the image to look whereas me and you it's squirrel eating nuts on a tree nuts. make it funny <laughs> do, you want, do, you want to, do you want to know a hack a little, a little hack if you type into gpt generate i can't remember the exact phrase but it's something like generate me a mid-journey um prompt hmm. you tell them i want to i want a squirrel eating a nuts on a tree Chat GPT text about and turns it into I want a squirrel eating a nut. A proper in nut. This uh, aperture proper, proper with this prompt. lens, etc. Uh, yeah, okay. it does it for you. So oh, that's a nice yeah. little hack. Nice. I did I'll a bit of playing the other day. I did um, a Formula One inspired piece of artwork in Mid Journey. Hmm. Oh, it's so good. It's so good. <laughs> it's all, and it's completely original artwork. Nobody's could claim copyright or anything. No. Um, and it's somehow I'm going to print it at some point. I just I was having a bit of a play to have my own personal satisfaction, but it's so good. Like I could have paid someone hundreds to do it. It's a bit of a it's a bit of a hot topic, isn't it? It's a debate because is it doing people out of work? Is it <laughs> devaluing it's actual really artists? Honestly, I've, I grew up with science fiction from eighties, and I honestly thought that we'd have robots to do all the menial tasks, like. Scrubbing mm. skid marks off a toilet and painting front of the house and clearing gutters out, while we yeah. could get on with being creative and create and and, and inspire all the arts. Turns out we've used fucking AI to do the creative stuff, and we're still scrubbing <laughs> skid marks off a toilet. How did that work out? How did we lose that one so quickly? <laughs> What's that film? What's that? I, is it I wrote it in with I uh, Will Smith. I, I robot. robot. Yeah. Turned into that, isn't it? They're going to turn on us. <laughs> Absolutely, mate. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I actually read something yesterday. It said twenty twenty nine. Twenty twenty nine is that? Is that twenty twenty nine. The way things the way things are going by twenty twenty nine, the the AI will finally decide that we, we're not worth keeping on. <laughs> we're gonna let it's us so go. So far at everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're gonna let us go. <laughs> oh god, it's very good. It's a very complimentary tool. I think. So, like the artwork I created, it was only a it was only a part of a bigger piece of artwork, and I'd done the I'd done um, almost the framing of it, and then I wanted something to fill it, mm. um, and I I, had, I asked AI to basically generate like a like a comic book sketch mm. with a couple of Formula One. I've cars. used it for that. I've used it for a comic book thing for uh, some of the stuff I write for magazines. Yeah, yeah. I think it's yeah, a just, little just bit... this generic sort of description of what I had. Yeah. It's still a little bit restrictive in terms of uh, styles. It's it's almost like it's preload preloaded with styles. I guess it's mm. an I'm guessing it's something that learns over time and adapts. It's almost like sometimes you'll ask it to do certain types of artwork, and it's almost like it'll do it, but you're going to get a copy and paste of the same style sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Still a long way to go with things like that, but it's still mind blowing, really. But we can create original artwork by just writing a small paragraph of text. It, it is It is a bit odd. The video stuff's blowing my mind at the minute. The Soros yeah. stuff. Yeah. It used to be so 
bad. But it's like coming on so quick, isn't it? That's blowing my like mind. You can almost do real stuff. Are we even real? Is but do you know what it is? Really? Here's the thing. <laughs> Technology, though, I've always had this feeling. Technology is almost whatever we can get, whatever we can get as consumers is probably 10 years behind all the guys. The guys the in mil- black The military. Yeah, those bastards. 100%. So you know full well. There'll be stuff that, there'll be real world events, news clips that have been generated, put money on it. Yeah, so if we're getting these Because we're now allowed videos, to see it now, yeah. 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 Mm, I bet you. I bet yeah. you. Oh, aren't we? Where's I'll my tinfoil hat? I'll get my tinfoil hat on and we'll, we'll, av- <laughs> we'll, we'll avoid the space lasers. <laughs> hey, God, speaking of space, I showed you, didn't I? I found, I was clearing out some stuff and I found um, a letter that I wrote <laughs> when I was 11 years old to the Prime Minister, basically saying, what chuff's going on at Roswell? Eh? Why don't you tell me? <laughs> Just tell me a load of information about UFOs and stuff. And I got a letter back from the Prime Minister's secretary, basically told me to fuck off. <laughs> Might be your own business. <laughs> 11 years old. What were your mum and dad thinking, letting you write a letter to Prime Minister about aliens at 11? They helped me do it. <laughs> Pretty sure. <laughs> Did you not get out much? <laughs> oh, no. No. <laughs> Did you not have any friends? <laughs> my, my reclusive nature's not developed over time. <laughs> that was from the start. <laughs> Oh dear. probably talk about screen print again, shouldn't we? Yeah, so angles Eventually. are cool, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, angles I'm, and pressure and stuff, I've just, yeah. I've just ordered a load of triple gerometers. Soft, medium and hard. All three. Watch your hand. So I'm a little bit limited. Um, oh, you have to. So the 95, raw 95 middles, aren't we? 90. 60, 70. 60, 70, 80, possibly. The outers. I'll tell you. Hang on. So 65, 75, 85 are the, probably the most common. But what I'm finding, because don't forget, I, I've been printing a long time. Trends change. People find new things. 55, 62, which I'd never fucking heard of. That's Six, exactly what I ordered. 65, and to know the difference between a 62 and a 65, Christ knows, 70, 75. It's very subtle. Yeah. So I've got five steps. 55, 62, 65, 70, 75. Five right. different steps between 55 and 75. Outers, we're staying to composites, keeping it simple. Throw your solid blades away. Let's not confuse things anymore. Yeah. So I've gone for 62, 90, 62, yeah. 55, 90, 55, and 70, 90, 70. Uh, which is soft, medium, and hard, I guess. Um, yeah, that, 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 I think that's a great start for you, especially with your Aquaflex uh, V3 that um, you put down as an underbase. You start using that 55 mm-hmm. on that, you'll see a massive difference. Well, I've been using the MHM Red soft. Which when it is comes straight away. 65. It is, right. Mm. Uh, so I'm going to gain a little bit just by that. Because yeah. I've, had, I've had a roll of squeegee blade. I've had a couple of rolls of squeegee blade and sort of forgot what I've ordered. So I thought, right, start from scratch. Get some brand new rolls of blade. Start from have, scratch. Have you got the cutters? Yeah, like the little Amazon shears. Yeah. Little, but you, um, can, uh, you can angle to do your yeah. corners. Yeah. Perfect. I saw quite a cool tool set uh, on some Instagram post the other day. Yeah, I, I saw it find well. it. No, I saw it as well. It had a, so I used it had to buy a, um, the clipper. So it had a, it's a round corner thing. To round yeah. the corners off. It's what we use to round corners of card off. Yeah, for sign making. Yeah, so you put a, yeah. that in. And then they... You used to use it on die bond and stuff. That's when you're the one on die bond. Vinyl yeah. signs. Yeah. Mm. yeah, yeah. I think it's mm. called a, a clipper. Yeah, I think it rings a bell. So it's sold by Femor at about €350,000. Or you can <laughs> nip to Amazon and just buy a uh, mitre shears... For fifteen quid, can do it that way. Yeah, we're fine. We're really well, we used to have a little razor blade in it, and it just trims it. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, I was cutting some notches out today with a, a really sharp knife, and 
I thought, oh, I wish I'd brought it with me, but I can't travel with those shears because they just look like, an, they look like an offensive weapon. It's so difficult trying to travel with tools. Well, this is something I'm finding out now. It's a pain in the ass having to pack a bag. And this amount of stuff I'm not allowed to take. Yeah. Like, well, you can't are you, even are you take a kind of the Are you putting it in the hold or are you putting it with you? I'm just taking a bag with me. But are you, I keeping, guess, it I think it's are you like... keeping it in, in, in the compartment with you or are you, are you checking it in, dropping it off? How long are you going for two oh, days? No, t- taking it with me, yeah. All right, so yeah, then you can't take me. any liquids, yeah. yeah. No, no, liquids well, you, even deodorant. You have batteries. to take, like, minis and stuff take like stick. that. Take a stick instead of a spray. I'm a bit weird about deodorant. So it's a lot of very chemically into it. I used, you know, I actually went through a phase. I don't know why I relapsed of not using deodorant whatsoever, mm. and I never smelled. I was like the best smelling ever. Danny, you work I on your you... own. You work on your own. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, just look around your shop now. Why has everybody left you? It's because you stopped using deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> why does everybody always leave me? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what are you doing today? I'm working with Stinky Pete. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> I actually put a job call out there. I've had a couple yeah. of people emailed. How's that, how's that been? Because, the, you know, the hardest... But We talk about angles. We talk about pressure and travel and EOM and, and diazo and all these fancy words. You know the worst thing of our industry? By a, a long way, the squishy things. I think it's a, one of those where a bad employee is worse than not at all. Yeah. I feel. I feel like if you can find the right people for the job, mm. a good fit, and uh, somebody who's going to get on and use a bit of common sense, and it makes you know it makes you money. But almost having somebody who just sort of drags their feet and or oh, sometimes just lacks a bit of common sense, it's almost worse having them than it is than not having them. So. I'm um yeah I've seen a couple of people sort of had a chat about it. It's difficult as well because it's all it's sort of part time hours. It's like mm. spread out of a week. But because of that, I can't say I want somebody uh, nine till two every day. It's almost what's your situation? What hours can you do? Mm. And then saying to and then you know working out in my head, does it work for me? Because every anybody in that sort of situation, it's probably somebody who's maybe they've already got a part time job. And we've got these days free. Or we've got kids, kids. and we're working yeah. around picking them up. Um, so I, I find it difficult, mate. I'm I'm because I'm from an era where the employee had to had to bend to the employer's rules. Had to had yeah. to you know we have to comply. If you want this job. You have to comply with my terms. And my terms are 8 till 5, Monday to Friday, 6 till 2 on a Saturday. They're my terms. Mm. Take it or leave it. And then you get people come along, oh, I can't work Fridays because little Johnny's got to be picked up from Boston. So can I, fin- <laughs> can, I fin- can I finish at 3? Does that still exist? <laughs> can I finish at 3 on a Friday? <laughs> well, no, that doesn't really work for me. Well, how about if I finish every other Friday? at three o'clock and pick little Johnny up from Barcelona. And then every other Friday, I'll get my estranged boyfriend to pick him up. Mm. Yeah, all right, that'll work. So now you're working around somebody else's um, routine, rotor. And I think it changed probably about 20 years ago, which is why I don't employ people anymore, because I wouldn't be taken to court. <laughs> <laughs> it's difficult. I think it used to be a job interview, and now it's a job audition. Like, you're auditioning your job to them. <laughs> What a great this... term. What a great way to describe it. It's yeah, almost how it feels. You're auditioning the opportunity to come and work at Flipping Sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Rather and than like... somebody coming to you and saying, will you employ me? Yeah, yeah. It almost feels like that. I had wow. somebody who knocked me back. I gave them, give them the, um, sort of showed them around and, you know, showed them what I want, told them what I wanted and answered all the questions. And then the message back, I said, that's ah, not for me. Type yeah, of it's, thing. A, it's a nice job. I, I like it. I love being creative. I love the process, but you're a bit stinky, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I need a deodorant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I'm going to will, reassess will you stop the situation. <laughs> I can't. I'm very fidgety today, aren't I? Yeah, I yeah you're bouncing all over the place. 
<laughs> I'm all out of sorts today, I think. I'm all out of sorts. Have you had a good day printing, we... Mike? What have you been printing? Today? Well, this is have part we, of the polyester all? saga. Oh, I've been heat pressing all chuffing day. Let me, I, better, I better explain the saga, the polyester saga, aren't I? Yeah. It's a little story. It's just why I'm a little bit glum. Um, so I had a, ironically, somebody sort of recommended this particular customer, so another printer, saying, oh, you want polyester? Look, I don't really want to do this, but Dan is quite good at it. <laughs> ironically. For somebody that doesn't like you. <laughs> must be, yeah. And, do you know, actually, to a, to be fair, I'd actually done, I've had some really successful polyester prints recently, and I, I, I sort of, so, something changed. In any way, this job, it was um, red polyester shirts. It needed a dye block base and then a white top colour. Mm. And I was using Magna's dye block, dye block black, which previously I'd had quite good success with. It printed really well. It, it dries a little bit quicker than, I think, other Magna products. I think it tends to dry a bit quicker. In the mesh. But as long as you... In the mesh. I think as long as you use um, a fogger... And as long as you keep it moving, I think it's okay. But this just this particular job for the life of me, and, it's, and you know how it is when you've got water based. Once problems start, it snowballs and escalates, and spiral of you're doom. making changes on the you're making changes on the fly, mm. and it, it sometimes it's it's still hard to know what's working because the, maybe the mesh is filled in and you made a, you made the right change, but it takes a couple of goes round. Before you see it take effect, type of thing. Yeah, I just had an horrendous time with it, and uh, I think the job, whatever the job cost, whatever 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 the invoice price was, mm. I doubled it in expenses trying to fix the problem. So I properly cost Washed me a fortune. Your ass on it. Yeah, yeah, big style. But more importantly than always, you just you just take it to heart, and you really hate letting people down don't you and yeah. uh, the deadline came and went and uh, luckily it was alright about it in the end and I gave up I decided to do transfers so I mm. ordered I ordered die block transfers which turned up all out of reg oh. and half a glue were missing so even the ones that are out of reg didn't properly adhere no I don't want to do that I don't like naming shame but it's Have got an S on the, on, the, on, the, on the shirt? No, no, no. No, no. It's not the typical ones. No. I, I, I probably mentioned them before. I mean, they put it right. I, I, I don't want to name and shame because they, did a, they were very uh, apologetic and they put it right as best as they possibly could without his, his hesitation. So you can't shit on them or anything because I guess these things happen. I mean, as a, as a, as a for... side note, as a tangent that we don't normally go on, my guy for transfers has just packed up. Really? Yeah, placing Barnsley. Mm. I wonder same why. Place. Do you know same why? Place. Yeah, conductive ink. Conductive ink. So I, I would say if I had to, if Did I you get electrocuted. To... Yeah, yeah. So I would say no that um, DTF, basically. Yeah. DTF has, has mean that people can. Uh, people can print their own without going to a bureau. So there were a couple of big bureaus in the UK. This was one uh, of them. Sort of uh, taking uh, business and away. And these used like a Sakurai and a digital printer. That got taken away by DTF. So now instead of people using a bureau, they'll print their own. Yeah. It's so I lost a bit of work on that. And we've always been doing conductive ink work, which is making transfers Circuit boards. from conductive ink. So you can either make a circuit board or you can put it into a shirt or you can put it into a, a, an, a, an arm cuff to, to test blood pressure or you can put it into ah. a weightlifting thing to, to see how many force, grams of force you're lifting. Oh, that's you know, really cool. Yeah, all these what a different shame. things. Are oh, you still doing that I'm bit? Interesting. But it's not doing the, 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 the colour that is ah, super. So that, that particular part of the business took off to the point that the other side has sort of just let it go. Oh, yeah. that's interesting. Well, mm. that's good though, because in business you've got to pivot and adapt. Yeah, you've got to be to... adaptive. Yeah, yeah. You've got to adapt to where the money takes you, haven't you? Sorry, Otherwise you stole, just stole your story. Then. Stole your story. Well, just... So, so well, anyway, you've got, yeah, you got these. You've got these job. transfers. You got these transfers. Got them transferred. Got these transferred. They were absolute garbage. 
um, in a nutshell, and just stuck another, another few days on job, a few more wasted garments. So what should have really been a a day job, mm. almost sort of dragged over two week, which wow. is when I say I've had a bad couple of week. I've had a bad couple of week mainly because of that, but then the the snowball effect that has because whilst mm. I've been trying to do those on multiple different days, I'm not doing somebody else's job. And then yeah. eventually, back end of that week, it's like, actually, these, are, these the deadlines are creeping up on me. Yeah. And so I've, sort of, I've got back on my feet now. I've got back up. Like I say, this week has been a better week. But I just think the toll that took, <laughs> I think I need a break. <laughs> so somebody gave you that job. How do you feel about giving other people jobs? Do you do it? Do you sub stuff out? Oh, I don't mind at all. I, I used to, I used, I had a couple of bad experiences with like embroidery and subbing mm. out embroidery work, etc. And it bit me on the ass when it turned, when it came back, and the customer wasn't happy with it. And then I thought, mm. oh, I've got this order. I've now got to refund you, and I've gone and paid someone else to do it. So like, I've lost out double. Mm. And then at that, after that, I sort of shied away from it for quite a few years. You don't do it and now. It's probably only. I don't do it, no. But if anybody asks, I contract it out now. Mm. So, but that's only recently, past couple of years. And um, actually, at the end of every year, I look at how much money I've made just from subbing stuff out. Mm. And I might take, I might make a tenner, I might make 20 quid, I might make 50 quid. If I'm really lucky, I might make 100 quid on a job. Mm. But those little tens and fifties and hundreds, over the tw- end of that 12 month, it adds up. It's a decent bit of money. Um so it's almost silly not to, but it's just finding the right people to do it for you that you can trust, I think. Yeah, my argument and is it, if you say no to that job, the customer will find someone who will do it, who will also do the stuff that you are saying yes to. Yeah. So I you think end up losing when the it's, knock-on work. Yeah. If it's, if it's somebody who comes to you and can you do me a load of embroidery, but quite often it's it's... I need these T-shirts doing. Oh, and can I also have 50 caps to go along with it? Mm. Those, for, I mean, for a lot of years, I would say, sorry, mate, I can't do the caps. And then they disappear. You never hear from them again. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the lesson to learn from that is you've just got to find somebody you can find rely Find a way to do it, yeah. Because it's better to retain that customer from the print side of things, especially yeah. when the, the caps are just a add-on extra. Oh, mm. let's chuck a few caps in, job. Um, I don't think there's anything... Morally wrong about that. No, and I think it's good. I think I, I think sometimes it's easier to get a a clear picture on your profit. You know, if, <laughs> if you say that you know I'm going to take this this hundred t shirt job on, it's going to take me all day. Uh, therefore, my wages plus this, and then it it takes two days. All of a sudden, you've lost money. Whereas if you give it to someone else, it's fifty p a shirt. End of story. Mm. If I have to work till midnight, doesn't matter. If I get them done at three o'clock, I win. But either way, I'm only charging you fifty p a shirt. So you've got yeah, a finite yeah. number that you can charge. Yeah, I think you described it quite well as well. <laughs> Outsourcing stuff that you don't necessarily fulfil, but the shitty jobs as well. Yeah, let, you out, let someone else you do a shitty job. When somebody gives you a polyester job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're. they're I think those are now limited to transfers in at least fifty, fifty yeah. plus. I'm not, I'm not printing direct into polyester anymore. I need like, I need a couple of years to get over that trauma. Somebody's hurt you. Know, I... Somebody's hurt you. <laughs> You've been hurt. Yeah, I've been hurt. <laughs> yeah. But I think what makes it worse is for somebody to recommend me as someone who's quite good at that particular. Uh, you know, printing on polyester, mm. and I and I sort of whoa, I've had some really good successful polyester prints. Some stuff that I, you know, quite a few people have gone. I'm impressed at how crisp your, uh, your you know, your lines are where the where the colours meet, etc. On polyester, being such mm. a textured garment, and how opaque and no dye dye migration whatsoever. And then for this one, just to fall on its ass, you've lost it, and I'm. Mm. I've lost it. I'm not not got it anymore. Yeah. The difference is when I'm printing on auto. And I guess Don't blame the auto. No. A good workman always blames his tools. Yeah. That's that's for saying. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, Paul is not for me anymore. 
So, which, right, I've been a bit, bit of an ignoramus, haven't I? What, what shop are you at now? What are you doing? What's your, where are you? Uh, oh, I talked am, about that. <laughs> I'm in, <laughs> I'm in Belgium. You're in a Belgium? Called, a place called Fabric. Belgian blonde. Is that plaster saw or water base? That's plaster saw, but it's nice and soft. And lovely and bright. I think it's it's three hits of a high it's mesh. Um, of the high mesh. 120? So, Is it 120 in there? Yeah, there'll be 77s. This is another shop that believes in, like you believe in, with a Moire of the uh, two different mesh counts. Hmm. So if you do two 48s, you get a, a Moire pattern. If you do a 48 yeah. and a 54, you don't get that pattern. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So logically, for me, a Moira is a uh, an interference pattern. We associate it with dots. So if there are no dots, you shouldn't get it. But if we get an interference pattern from the mesh, I can understand it. And I have seen it. Um, mm. I think sometimes if we don't get our print parameters right, we don't want to leave the pattern of the mesh in our print. And if we are leaving the pattern of the mesh, something's not quite right. We're either putting too much pressure and leaving an imprint of the mesh, or we're not printing it, clearing it properly, so we're leaving uh, this this pattern. Ideally, we want the ink to pass over the thread of the mesh and mm. freely flow. We don't want to see an yeah. interpretation. So sometimes it's yeah. uh, off contact's too low, and we're, we're leaving an imprint of like a, a squares pressed into the mm. wet ink. And then the, I mean, the next lot of squares press into the ink and we get that interference back. Logically, Moira starts in Photoshop. But practically... So this is solid vector work. There is no Photoshop. All right, solid vector. All right, I see what you're saying now. Right. That's what I oh, mean. Of course, it's because it's white, solid text, etc. Yeah. Logically, we shouldn't get Moira on the solid vector work. But when we get yeah, it, it's because yeah. an interference pattern... We associate with dots, but it can be an interference between two meshes. I wonder if I wonder if Moira is the right right word. Maybe we need to come up with new because Moira is typically after done based. And Moira is typically like... associated as an interference pattern between dots, but an interference mm. pattern between mesh. I don't know whether it's the same word or not, but that's what we see if we use the same mesh count on two whites, white flash white. I'm still struggling with. Because I'm limited to white flash white with the same screen, getting good whites mm. on the manual. I, I think I did a better job at manual. I'm yeah, still it's easier to change. Easier to change your print parameters when you've got a manual between your first print and your second print. Well, you do it by hand. Yeah, when you've Whereas... got an auto, you've got to use the same print parameters on both. Yeah, and that's duplicates. when it doesn't work. Yeah, round one oh, you want oh. two hits. Round two you want one hit. I wonder if MHM can program that in. I'll ask them. If I ask them nicely. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm They've... in Belgium. The full story is the guy saw me at an exhibition in Belgium about four or five months ago. You remember I was doing the jellyfish for Magna? Yeah, yeah, it was a bloody lovely print, that. So I was doing that job there, and uh, he then proceeded to uh, go press the button on the upgrade. He had an m and and an old very old, 1999 MHMS type. Uh, wow. And he decided to press the button and an upgrade to two new MHM pressers. And while he's doing it, he's going to upgrade his screen room. So he's gone for the Sarti LTS laser. All right, interesting, yeah. So laser to Is screen. that the upright one? The laser to screen, two screens, yeah. one on each side. Um, I've done quite a few. I, I, I haven't done them. No, that's wrong. I've been involved with the installation of a few in America. That doesn't mean I can install them. I'm not an expert on them, but I've been around them for a while now. Um, mm. They've got some little nuances that I like. I've got some that I don't. But <clears throat> overall, nice little unit. And when there's over 100 been put in over the last two years in America, there's something good. Something good's happened. If, yeah, you, look at, if you look at Shirt Show, the guy at Shirt Show's have one put in. Oh, is it Andy? Oh, uh, Dylan's got one Dylan. in there, I think. I think it's Dylan. I might have heard in recent episodes. Yeah, he's put one in. Kevin Carth puts them in, doesn't he? So, uh, and I've been involved yep. in one. Put one into Hanover, Pennsylvania in January last year. Within three months, I bought another. So, you know, and, and they're not wow. cheap. 
They're not cheap, but they've got God, no, they must be no consumables. High production. <laughs> yeah, they've got nine presses. Wow. So the no consumables, laser to screen, takes a step out of it, writing on the image with light, basically. Uh, mm. And, it, you know, I, I like it, but I get the same old thing. I've been called on to set up the presses. So if you've got the option of an MHM, a Rock, and an M&R, which is the top three selling presses, mm. other presses are available in my BBC voice. But you look at, okay, pieces per hour, it's about the same. Size of screen, it's about the same. Rock's a bit bigger, MHM's, uh, m rs slightly wide, uh, longer, depending on what press you buy. Money-wise, yeah. they're about the same. So you're looking for something that sets them apart. What sets them apart? Well, they've all got a trilock system, which is using the edge of the frame, 60 to 70% success rate on accuracy. And the MHM has this pin system. And you'll hear the salesman, the slimy salesman that we always see. Oh, you just put these screens in, fit and forget. And then you buy this press based on what the salesman said. You get your first job off your... Hundred thousand dollar unit that you've just bought for lasering, you put it in your press and it doesn't fucking work. Mm. It doesn't register. Now, luckily, you've got four highly skilled printers who can eye up a job, squeeze it in, tap it in, move it around, tweak it about, and get it running within half an hour or so. And then you're left with sort of buyer's remorse. Hang on, the salesman said. I would do, be doing more because my jobs are all under 100 pieces, all under six colours. And so he said, that, you know, I can just slot these screens in and they're being reg. I've seen videos online of some bloke with a big nose that says, hang on, he can do it. What's going on? Which one of you is lying? Because I've got it in my press now. I've got it in my shop. I've got two brand spanking ones. I've got guys with 10 years experience. I've got a $100,000 unit that makes screens. And I, I've, I've gone from a 1,500 quid Epson TS3200. So why is it not lining up? And people forget there are three places, three processes involved in this. Artwork, imaging, and press. If one of them's out at press, it doesn't work. Now, in this case, almost two of them were out. And so... We had to dial it back in and reset everything yeah. and start from scratch, even sitting and working at the artwork. So the guy has gone from an Epson printer, and he does what you do, and I know you still do it because we've had the conversation. He's got a three-color job. He makes three copies, turns stuff to black and white, black and white, black and white, and that puts either a layer at a time or a page at a time. Yeah. You still do it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And, he, do it. And, he, and, and he's doing that. Well, we stopped doing that in about 1991, 92, yeah. when software was so, invented to do it for us, called the RIP software. So there's absolutely zero reason whatsoever for you to waste your time turning things to black and white when a piece of software does it for you. That's like, yeah. that's like, I tell you what it's like. It's like printing on your Epson, or whatever your, is it, whatever it is, Printing the what positive, have you said? Printing, the, printing the Epson positive, but only printing the outline of the shape. And then when you get the <laughs> film, you're colouring it in with a black felt tip. That's exactly <laughs> what that's like. It's like I've got a printer that will fill that space in in the middle, but you know what? I feel like I need to be involved in this, so I'm going to colour it all in on my own. Uh, and the RIP software, any RIP software, that's what it does. Takes named spot mm. colors and creates them into black, solid black channels. So you don't have to worry yeah. about anything. You press Control P, done. You know, six color job. You sat there looking at. Have I missed his eyes? Are his feet in this one? What color were his hands? Oh, the amount of times that's happened. <laughs> God. When there is a piece of software that does it for you, and it's not even that expensive. And this guy's using the same piece of software that created his films, filmmakery, to run his. $100,000 unit that's now a laser unit. Same software. Yeah. And so yeah. he's still doing it the same way. Turning things to black and white, making multiple copies, turning layers on, making them visible, making them not visible. Which means there's lots of opportunities to make a mistake. Pick something up and move it a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Now, in your shop where you've got an FPU, your skill 
is lining those screens up. It doesn't matter if one's yeah, a mill out. Not. It doesn't matter if one, one's a mill out. It doesn't matter. You've got the skills okay. to put it right. When we go to a, a unit that's been promised for no more registration and we're a mill out, we're like, why? Why is it a mill out? Well, it must be the press. So we move the press. Now the press is permanently a mill out, so everything that comes out, out of the screen room is a mill yeah. out. But the other yeah. way now. So we started at the artwork. We introduced the automatic separation software, which you already had. Didn't have to buy, just didn't use it. Then, sure. um, filmmaker made by Cadling. Filmmaker. It's filmmaker and screen maker. Write that down. Filmmaker. Cadling. You, you, you use ac- accurate, I think, don't you? Yeah, I'm just curious. Filmmaker. Cadling. You carry on your story. I'll leave it there for later. Probably 12, 1500 quid, something like that. There's one, what's the one that Accurip have? Emerald. Uh, Colour separation. Emerald. Something like that. I will separation to that's separation it. Studio. That's something. It's separation different. Studio. I mean, that works Accurip, in Photoshop files. I'm talking about Illustrator files on. Straightforward Illustrator files. Mm. Although it does work in, in Photoshop files if they're multi channel and you drop them in as a placed uh, DCS2 EPS. All right. So. Where were I? Oh, yeah. Output to the output device. Now, the guy yep. is an expert on his Sati output device. He's not an expert yeah. on MHMs, and he's not an expert on preparing the work. So he has adapted the Sati LTS to work with his workflow, which was the same as when he had a film printer. Doing the separations, making everything cropped, making everything as small as possible so as not to waste film. So mm-hmm. now we've got a mathematical center instead of a true center. Uh, then when we get to um, we get to press, because that's been the case ever since we got these new presses, they're not at zero. Nobody's zeroed no, them out no. because no. every job is different. So I'm, now I'm back to having all this investment, but I might as well have kept my M and R and my film print. Because I'm still wasting the same amount of time setting screens. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I don't think the salesman's the salesman's not lying. It's just there are steps involved that you have to learn, and it's the lack of understanding of, of of those three processes. Creating a template, an output, out, an output template, and using Illustrator as an output program or a layout program, yeah. if you like. Um, <clears throat> streamlining it so that everything that comes out of the art room is the same. The drop is dictated yeah. in the art room now, not by the screen guy and not by the printers. It's dictated no. by the guy in the art room. You want it four and a half little toes down from the collar, <laughs> then you know we can do that in the artwork. It doesn't matter that I've used a yeah. piece of paper this big because I'm not wasting anything. It's, no, got, no. it's got to expose it all anyway. And then making sure we're using the same zero point on the LTS as the same zero point on the on the uh, MHM press, because if we get that wrong, nothing's ever in place. Yeah. We can't trust the length of the frame. The length of the frame, the tolerance on the frame is probably about a mil, maybe a mil and a half. Yeah, when you're manufacturing the frames, the tolerance on yeah. the on the MHM is zero point zero two mil. So if the frame is half a mil bigger. I'm half a mil out if I'm using the wrong yeah, side. Yeah, yeah. So we yeah. have to we have to make sure those three are knotted together. I recently spent time in Florida doing exactly this with a a, a five thousand. The guy, Ice Pop, uh, mentioned it in the in the group. Um, oh yeah, yeah. One hundred fifty oh, yeah, screens. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. One hundred fifty screens only made for very small adjustments, minority, and the, those are probably, not bad. Those are probably screen tension and squeegee blade hardness. So straight up and down. Yeah. Yeah, and but but before that, he thought the MHM was just a a, a blue rock basically. That's the only, that's the only difference. It's painted blue. What do you mean? Well, I still have to set every screen, and I don't have a tri lock now, so I've got to use my skill to set every screen. And, yeah. and only when you explain that, well, this step must be done, this step can't be missed, and this step can't be missed, and as long as those three are in, we're happy, we're good, where everything's going to work. And this one here, we put the five, seven, seven color job in, and one of the screens was out. It's right, okay, it's not a problem. It happens, shit happens. Why do you think it's out? Oh, I've just done a sleeve job. 
and well, the guy in the screen room set it too high, so I've actually moved the screen ah, to all down. down ten mil, and now I can't find my way home. So, well, there is a click. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know there was a click. Yeah. So come on, let's let's go back and we'll, let's find it. And then once we found it, we put the screens into the print. Superb. No registration on all seven frames. Goes but back if, to if, the. If nobody points that out, you think you've bought a lemon. Yeah, but it, it goes back to the. The car salesman. When the car salesman sells you a car, he do not teach you how to drive it. And this is what it is. Or care if you've got a license. All yeah. he cares about is have you got finance? Yeah. Can you afford it? So, yeah. but I think once you buy the press and you get the, I suppose, once you buy a press, get Tony to sort it out for you. You'll be, be laughing. Yeah. But it is, it is See my website here for availability. <laughs> we spent 10 minutes, it was just a giant plug. <laughs> but it, it is, it's it's very close to plug and play once you've got the variables and you've got these, you've got everything, you know, you've got systems in place. That yeah. Once you've nailed it down, it, it is so simple. But if one of them's out, you have to find out which one's out. Um, yeah. And that, that's what we've been doing over the last couple of days. And the first time I used the settings that the the salesman who doesn't understand the MHM, the first time I used his settings, I immediately knew this will never work. Mm. Because it was using a, a, a mathematical center point. The mathematical center point, you've got to think, okay, how do we get the center? We look at the overall size and we divide by two. That's the center. Yeah. Make sense? Yeah. What happens if... The design is 178.32 millimetres. What's the half of that? Okay, well, it's 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 60, 66.25672. Six, so we've got to mm. round it either up or down. So during yeah. that rounding up or down process, we lose registration. Plus, if the thing that yeah. we're sending is a different size every time, how do we get a constant? So we've introduced a few rules and a few templates um, and, and just changed the way that he does artwork, which I thought was going to be odd to start with because he's a little bit resistant. He's been doing it for 10 years like this. Don't want to change it. He knows what he's doing. He's good at changing things to black and white. It's what he does. Thinks in black and white now. Looks at a job yeah, in yeah, red, yeah. red, green and blue and he sees black, black, black. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know it's so, exactly what it means. Well, you do it the same way, yeah. Uh, and so changing his ways was difficult. Uh, but once we did it, he sort of like went, oh, actually, that's all right, then. I quite like that. I could get used to that. Yeah. Mm. And we got good results, so. <laughs> but that's what it's about. you just got to learn and adapt, haven't you? you, you can get, it's easy to get stuck in your old ways and saying you can't teach an old dog new tricks, but... The worst thing I ever hear want... in any shop... The, the phrase that I dread the most. We've always done it like this. That's how we've always done it. Yeah. That's how we've always done it. Why do you do it like that? That's how we've always done it. You've got to be open to change, haven't you? Stop that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Well, so, so that's where I am that's... now. Uh, we've got another two days. We've nailed it. We've zeroed the presses in. Now we've got the issue, bigger issue. I've got 250 screens, so they're all in rotation. He's been making screens for the last two weeks. I've zeroed the presses. 30% of the jobs to do have been made the old way. To do the job, so do we have to lose the zero. Start again? We have to lose the zero. Now, we, have you noticed you also got a clicker system, the clicker? Yeah, it just clicks. So yeah. it clicks home. Yeah. So I've got to get rid of all the old jobs, make sure they're all gone. In fact, the, the owners said, right, okay, I'll tell you what, they'll strip them. So what? We are printing them. Yeah, I'll strip them. I'll strip them and just remake them. I think you'll almost, a, from, maybe you'll get that time back. From a time point of view, I think it's worth it. Stop fucking about with it. Stop messing about with it. Anything that's been made before you arrived, I'm going to strip and we'll remake it, even if it's a single colour, because even the single colour wasn't straight and central. No, no, if it's to not the set palette. To... It wants straight and central to the palette. So they were moving yeah. every screen, even a single colour job, even a, a white going round twice with one screen on 20 shirts. They were moving it to make sure it was straight and central. Yeah, but they're new, getting plug-and-play screens, 
Yeah. I'm pretty sure you'll get that time back. Uh, I, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So it'll be worth it. Worth and we've, and then we threw some water based in today just to piss things about a bit. Well, this is something worth touching on because, like I, I think I said last episode, I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to try get back to printing water based again. Um, Pure water based or water based with plastic on top, like a cheating bastard. No, no. Well, I'm a cheating bastard now. I am the cheating bastard. That's my specialty. <laughs> I am the water based plastic all. <laughs> I'm not. I'm going to say wizard, but that's a bit egotistical. But that is what I do anyway. Um, but I'd like to try water based, water based. Again, what combination? That's something that stumped me at the minute. The, so the, the let, bases. let's, let's get the experts Aquaflex, Aquaflex, but now. Let's get the experts in, shall we? Uh, let me reach out to Magna and find out if uh, if Paul or somebody from Magna is available to because see you on, through the journey of changing from uh, an old dirty plastic oil printer to a <laughs> new clean green water based magician. Do you know? I just. Honestly, really care about dolphins, and I think well, it's trees. so disgusting that people print plastic these days. <laughs> no, I'm not asked about trees. We don't have feelings; they're just pieces of wood. Out. <laughs> <laughs> they don't know the difference. <laughs> it's, it's, honestly, it's always. It's, I think it's good to be eco-conscious, and as as you know responsible as possible responsible that's a good way to look at it be responsible and you know use eco alternatives if possible um be responsible with your waste but not at the cost of efficiency and quality um yeah and with that that's where I've, that's the approach i've always sort of took to it I, when i very first got started with water base i went down the route to with an eco shop it didn't last very long when i realized it was Causing me problems. Mm. I did stick at water based for a couple of years, um, but I just I just went back to printing this combo because I could get good results out of it, um, and that's all that matters to me. To be honest, yeah, it's the eco side of it's nice, but it's not priority. Okay, so let, let's reach out to, to to somebody at Magna and see if we can get um, uh, a bit of information to help smooth the transition. Ironically, they'll say you came on the academy years ago. Did you? Did you not listen? <laughs> it's changed. It's changed since then. We, I, threw has... white, I threw a white flash white in today, right? Okay, and I even went to the point. So let's make this beautiful. Let's make three screens: white flash, white flash, white. And we did. Mm. And we spent a lot of time fine tuning, much more time than we should have done because I'm trying to train them. And yeah, in that yeah. time, the emotion fell off. <sighs> It just fell, That's the thing that it just me. fell just... clean off. And so I went, right, okay, you're obviously using the wrong one. Let's get on the internet. Let's see, what have you got? Photocode 1830. Okay, let's see. It's probably just for plastic. Oil. Perfect for discharge. Perfect for water burst. <laughs> extremely strong resistance. Hmm. Well, then we must be doing something wrong. Let's have a look at how humidity. 41% all day long. Hmm. Okay, so let's look. You know, we start to look at all these different things. Then we find out. Shit, I don't know. Well, Tony, you're, the, you're, the, some... you're the expert. Why did my emulsion fall off? I don't know. Emulsion's one of those, one of those where you can get every variable right, you think, and then it works in your shop, and then another shop it doesn't. And you're like, why? We're just copy and pasting the exact same settings, but for some reason, what would be good is actually would be to have a little little series, a little run of episodes. I'll have a chat with Magna, if possible, mm. um, to talk me through the best combination I can have a go at printing water-based. Um, and then maybe we can get Dean at Pyramid on if he's willing to jump on. And, yeah, yeah, because um, he, he's, he knows everything. Bit of an emotion about emotion. episode. Yeah, yeah. Because I'm a bit of a boring bastard. I ain't got a lot to tell you. So if we could do a few episodes. You've run out <laughs> of show and tells, haven't you? No, I've got a show and tells. I've I thought got you'd run out. Tells. I've got a couple more. No, I've got a few more to show you. I had, a little, I had a little stack sort of ready. You've had, you've had, if I show you them all at once. Shoot your load to early. shoot myself in the foot. Yeah. So we'll reach out. You having another Jupiler? We're back on Jupiler. Jupiler. So we'll reach out. Let's try and get a couple of uh, actual experts on. Yeah, rather than us two just talking bollocks all the time. 
Yeah, I think it'd be a bit up a bit. Because that can explode it. Yeah, you tell. <laughs> so I didn't like it. Yeah. Oh, God. I ain't got any antimories out to tell you. They're not written in. Antimory actually. Our antimory is written in, but it were more of a just touching base to make sure I'm okay. <coughs> so. Do we know what it is yet? To read it out. Who do you think it is? I think they're definitely an island. Yeah, but definitely some Mrs. We, Brown's we boys going on. Definitely there. knew who that was last week, and it was somebody not in Ireland. It, like every week, we change. So I know, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I've got my suspicions. One's evil, and one's Irish. <laughs> One <laughs> likes to flex his muscles. <laughs> 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 Right, let's wrap this up. And I'm going to go Come and see then. if I can find a burger somewhere in, in Ghent, where I am. Um, what time is it here? 8.30. Oh, is it? Oh, you're yeah. now in front. I thought you was an hour behind. No, by the way. Oh, I, so, do, I do feel that. Sorry, one. We'll wrap it up. <laughs> you do <laughs> what? You forget that I'm a time traveller. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> No, I was going to say, I do, I do, I do apologise. I feel like it was a bit of a lacklustre episode from my part, but I just, I've just had a shit week, so. You've had a shit week. You've got the brain right. space for it, to be honest. You're going to have, you're going to have a <laughs> beer. We're gonna meet, yeah, we're going to meet up in, in, in Amsterdam. We're going to have some Amsterdam stories. I'll tell you what I'm going to do, though. I'm going to take this camera as well. I'm going to try and, I don't want to be like a vlogger, but I'm going to, I'm going to try film a few things and I'll put like a little compilation Mon- video montage. with some nice, yeah. Dolphin background meditation music on, <laughs> so that you can have a watch. That'd right be good, work. It? <laughs> That's my plan, anyway. Right. That being said, let's crack let's up and a it. Crack up and a beer. Dip downstairs and have a burger. I'm going to drive home, and then you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to spend the rest of my night answering fucking emails. <laughs> <laughs> Need an assistant. Right. So all that remains to be said is. Bye. You, yeah, you have been listening to, uh, following, and hopefully subscribing to the best podcast. Probably unsubscribing. The best Probably podcast. Cheers, the no, if this is the number one podcast in the UK referring to um, things to do with ink and squeegees and screen printing. Yeah. So keep it going. Yeah. Uh, tell your friends. Fuck them. <laughs> keep <laughs> Make it, Even a shit episode are better, so. He's make it magical. Yeah. Keep it going. Uh, like, <laughs> subscribe, follow, tell your mates, uh, do anything you want. And if you get us more followers, we might even buy you a pint. So it's worth a go. And until next time, all that remains to be Visual. said is from me, Visual. Tony P at Palm Print, and. Daddy D, Flip Sweet Print Co. We'll see thee. Turn off for a bit. Silly. Oh, you keep giving me posh no, she don't agree with me. I don't want lobster thermidor with a raspberry coolie. It's Friday night, I'm within me rights. I want a chippy tea.